Today we're going to be reviewing an accessory for the microbit and it's called the BitBot car. This is a line following car that you can program your microbit, slot the microbit into the car and that will be the brains of the car. Now in terms of the hardware on the car itself, it's got two motors that can be worked independently. So it has a left motor and a right motor on, on the wheel. So you can spin these independently and doing that you can make it turn left and turn right or go forward, even reverse and so on. It has some LED lights on it that you can program to light up and to change different colors depending on what it's doing. And then underneath it has this kind of ball that it, it uses to balance on. And then more importantly, it has the sensors, the left and the right sensors underneath. Now it has both line following sensors and light uh, sensors as well so it can detect if it goes over a line either on the left or right so it's if it's following a line on a track or it can detect changes in light so for this review we're going to be using the line sensors we have uh, a track that has a line around it we're going to be programming the car to see if it can go around itself using the line sensors and the codes that we give it in terms of age group it's probably suited for maybe eight years old nine years old plus up to teen years um, they're quite easy to use, they're quite robust, and um, you do you know you do need to be take a little bit of care with them, but the code itself is very easy to use and to understand. Price-wise, they're about 30 or 40 euros. And um, this is the BitBot Classic version. There's now a BitBot Excel version that has kind of rearranged uh, the layout a little bit. You can even put a pen at the back so you can get it to draw on paper itself. As I said, we're going to be using a, a specific track to drive around. But if you want, you can create your own tracks using paper and maybe a blank marker. Just make sure you make the lines thick enough so that the, the BitBot, the sensors can pick them up. You can also get some templates that you can download and print out and make your own custom tracks. So I'll provide a link in the description below. So let's create the code to program the BitBot car. So we're going to be using the make code Dot com website and we're going to click on the microbit link here to open up the microbit website so we're going to click on new project and that will open up a new blank project editor now because we're using a microbit accessory the bitbot car we need to add in an extension to the to the editor here so that we can access the blocks and to to access the sensors and spin the motors and, and drive the car so if you click on advanced and then click on the extensions link here this will open up a page where you can add in extensions to your toolbox so we're going to be using the bitbot car so we can see it here uh, straight away or if you don't see it there you can type bitbot into the search up the top and that should filter it down and give it to you so just click on the bitbot image there and that will add in the BitBot uh, blocks into the toolbox. So in here, we've got different blocks for driving the motors, uh, accessing the line sensor or the, or the light sensor. And there's even blocks in here that we can color the LEDs and change in different colors on the BitBot. So we're going to be using those. The BitBots, they came out with a classic version or came out with the original version, but they're also after creating an extra large version. And there's different considerations then in terms of how fast the motors spin and so on. So they've added a new block here where you can select the BitBot model that you're using. So the model I'm using is the original classic. So I'm going to drag a select BitBot model and set it to classic and put that in into the on start. That's just to, to make sure that everything works correctly. If you don't use that, it should pick it up automatically, which, which BitBot model you have, but you're probably better off just specifying it just to be on the safe side. Okay. So now getting down to actually coding the car itself. So programming the car. So we want to use the line sensors to detect if they're going over the line. And if they are, we need to turn the car accordingly. So we're going to get an if then else from the logic toolbox and put it inside the forever because we're forever going to check the sensors. Now, what we want to do is in the condition here, we want to put in two conditions. So we want to check the left line sensor and the right line sensor. So let's get an and block and put it inside. And then in the first condition, we're going to check if it's equal to and what we're going to do is we're going to go into the BitBot toolbox, go into the sensors uh, 
blocks and get the left line sensor, not the light sensor, the line sensor. And we'll put that in instead of the first zero. So what we're going to say is if the left line sensor is being activated, it is touching the black line. So it's either going to be zero if it's not touching the line or one if it is touching the line. So if it is touching the left line sensor, or that has been triggered and the right line sensor is not. So the left line sensor is being triggered and the right line sensor is not. That means we, we will want to turn right. So what we're going to do is turn the motor. So we're going to go into the motors um, toolbox and we're going to get the drive left motor at speed 600. So if we get, we're actually going to put two of these in. So one for the left and one for the right. So we, if we want to turn right, that means we do not turn the left line, spec, the left motor, sorry, but we do turn the right motor, the right wheel. So that will make a turn right. So that caters for if the left line sensor is, is activated. So now we need to cater for if the right line sensor is activated and if so, turn left. So we need another else if in here. So I'm going to click on the plus to add one in. I'm going to select this whole group of blocks here and duplicate it because I'm going to be using the same blocks. But this time we'll say if left line sensor is zero and right line sensor is one. And then again, we'll get these blocks here to drive the left and the right motors. But this time, we'll because we want to turn to the right, we will spin the left motor at speed 600, but leave the right motor at speed zero. So that can make a turn to the right. So if if we not if we're not turning to the left and we're not turning to the right, therefore neither of the sensors are being triggered. So we just want to drive straight forward. So we can just get one of these blocks and say drive both motors at speed 600. Okay, so that's all the code you need for actually using the line sensors to drive around the track. Now we can make it better and tweak it and so on, but we'll do a little test run. But before I do, I'm going to just use the LED blocks. Um, number one, it kind of makes the car look better as it's going around using the LEDs to light up. But number two, it, it'll help us test if our code is correct. So when it's turning left, let's, let's add some code. So we can set all the L LEDs. So when it is turning to the left, we will make it go, say, yellow. When it is turning to the right, we will make everything turn blue. And if we're going straight forward, we will want to be turning or we'll turn the lights green. So those those colors will just help us test out if it is working or not, just so we can visually see if the code is getting into these places. Okay, so we're going to download this. So I'm going to call it Bitbot and download it. So this will just package your program into a file and, and download it onto your computer. So now I need to select this file and send this to my microbit. Okay, so I have programmed the microbit and downloaded the program and sent it to the microbit and I've placed the microbit just slots in into the bitbot like that. Okay, so we're going to just turn it on and do a little test. So it should go green and drive both the motors because if it's not turning left or not turning right, then it should just go straight and that's what it's doing. I'm going to cover the left line sensor. And if this goes on, it should turn blue and then just the right motor should spin, making a turn to the right. Again, if we check the right line sensor, so it turns to yellow and it's just the right motor that's turning, so that will make a turn to the left. So it seems to be working. We'll try it out on the track now and see how we go. So we can see there it is detecting the line and it is working its way around. Okay, it's gone off the track, so we're maybe going a little bit too fast. So what we'll do there is we'll just change our code and um, to slow it down maybe on the corners and see how that works out. So as the car just went off the track, it's apparent that we're going maybe a little bit too fast. So if you look at our code here, we're spinning the, to turn to the right, we're going at speed 600 to turn to the left we're going at speed 600 and driving straight we're going at speed 600 so just like in real life 
Um, if you go too fast around a corner, you're going to crash. So what we're going to do is just slow down and go at different speeds, depending on if we're turning or if we're going straight. So this would be a great use of variables. So let's create one called speed straight and then called speed turn. Oh, speed turn. So two variables. So let's set these in on start. So we will have one for speed turn and one for speed straight. So for speed turn, let's go a little bit slower. So around the turns, let's just go at 300 speed. And so the maximum speed is, is 1024. So for the straight speed, let's go say 700 and we'll see how we go. So now I've, I've created the variables. I've set them at the start, but now let's actually use them. So the speed straight goes down here when we're going straight and the speed turn. Duplicate. Yep. And the speed turn will be used when we're actually turning. So 300 for turning and 600 for straight. So I'll download this again and try it. Okay, test number two. This time we're using uh, different speeds for going around the corner and going straight. So I'm going to start the bit bad up and let's go. So we can see it is detecting the line and turning left accordingly. Oh, and it didn't work on the corner again. So let's go back to our code. So let's change our speeds. And this is one of the handy things about using variables is you just need to change it in one place as opposed to multiple. So for our turn, let's go right there. Let's have it, sorry, let's go 150. And for our straight speed, let's go down to say, now let's try 400, we'll be conservative. So we'll download and try this again. Okay, test number three. So this time, turning speed of 150 and a straight line speed of 140. So we can see here that as it's going around the corner, it is definitely going slower. It's taking, it, taking more time, but it is doing it correctly. So let's see if it stays on the track this time. Yeah. So that was the corner that was doing us in. So it is going correctly now. So this time the left line is sensor is triggering. So it's turning right. So on the straight and it's completed a lap. So now that we figured out what's the correct speed to go around the track in terms of the straight line speed and the cornering speed, I've loaded up a second micro bit and a second bit bottom. We'll just have a little race. And this kind of shows you how if you have a friend or if you're doing this in school, you can code the micro bits and have little competitions and races against each other to see who can code it to go around the, the track successfully the fastest. So let's start up to two micro bits and have a little race. So both the micro bits started. And away we go. So we can see the colors are slightly differently, slightly different in how we've coded them. And also the speed variables are different. Oh, one of them has gone off. Let's just fix that. So what you can do is if you're racing and if the car goes off the track, you can maybe give it a three or a five second penalty. Oh, it's gone off again. And in that way, you can kind of race them round. So one has finished and the second one, as you can see, is a little bit slower, but this one hasn't come off the track once. So slow, but steady. And there we go. So to wrap up, I gotta say, I do really like this piece of kit. If you do have a micro bit and you can afford it, I would recommend uh, spending the money to get a BitBot or the BitBot Excel. Uh, they re really are a lot of fun to use and you can do a lot of different things with them. A couple of things I didn't mention is that you can actually put on a sonar sensor on the front, which can detect how far away in centimeters or inches 
the car is from something. So doing that, you could actually make your own track, your own maze, and try and program your BitBot car to autonomously navigate through it, like a Tesla or like some of the, the new cars that are coming out that have their own self-driving programs in them. Um, what's good about it, I think, is that the amount of different things you can do with it are quite large. So you can program it to race around itself, around the track. If you have a second micro bit, you can use the radio functionality to actually use your second micro bit as a remote control. So as you tilt it forward, you can make the car go forward. If you tilt it left, make the car go left and right. So you can actually have a remote control and be programming the car and walking behind it, which is a bit of fun as well. Um, you can get a Talons accessory where you can pick things up and close around them which you can program as well so there really is quite a lot things i didn't like about it is it's maybe a little bit delicate some of the motors is kind of hard to see but they're quite they're the gears are exposed the cogs are exposed which means if this goes on carpet or it is going to be going on the ground it can pick up little bits of dust little bits of hair or fluff and they can get caught in the motors i did have one of them that unfortunately doesn't work anymore because i got um, some something caught in the gears and it no longer functioned it no longer worked but apart from that it's all positive i really really liked it um, and it's a great piece of kit to get if you do have a microbit and to play around with <laughs>